Thank you, big brother. Brother Cliff. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you for your strong support. So let's go, man. We got the big guns on deck, baby. Yes, sir. We got the big guns. Who we got? We got the, the great Salim Muakil, a living legend in black radio on WBON in Chicago. That's right. The great uh, student minister, regional student minister, Abdul Halim Muhammad, out of the southwest region in Houston, who was a longtime radio host in that city until some moves were made against him. So, brothers, are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. All Go right. Ahead. All right. Well, Congre- thank congratulations, you. by the way, man. You know, salute on that one year. Hey, man, we just trying to be like you, Celine. We just okay. want to grow up to be like you, brother. <laughs> we just want to grow up to be like you because you, man, brother BJ, you know, when I first came to this city, it's been almost, I guess it's been like 30 years ago. Yes, sir. Celine would bring me on his show, brother. We would have beautiful conversations and beautiful dialogue. Wow. And his listeners are some of the smartest in the country, Wow. And you know, and you know, he's, yeah, you know, he's a, he, he's a powerhouse. Right. So That's right. I heard brothers, him. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he's a powerhouse, man. I don't know why he ain't on in the afternoon, but that's just what the hell I think. <laughs> anyway, I ain't going to get into my brother. Thank you. <laughs> I ain't even going to get into that, but I'm just saying. <laughs> when you got a hall of fame, but yo, you got LeBron. Why right. you got him over here and not in front of time, baby? Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to let it go. Our topic, black media, rude, ratchet, or control. And our panelists are right now, Brother Salim Wakil, WBON AM 1690, Saturday nights. What time, Brother Salim? Uh, 7 to 10. 7 to 10, Saturday night. Get your mm. ears or your face in the place now. And we have Abu oh, Halim Muhammad. So, Brother Lane, what what it so are our only choices? Rude, ratchet, or control when it comes to black media? It, it increasingly appears that way, man. As competition mm. for eyeballs grows increasingly fierce, man. People have to appeal to the masses most rudimentary levels and often that mm. you know the appetites the the basic appetites yeah. sex hunger you know those kind of things and and that seems to be that common denominator that's driving a lot of this media that's out here fortunately wow it's yeah. a big change yeah. for us man because we in the game for a completely different reason the whole reason that black people got in the game was for freedom to get, mm. get ourselves out of our situation we are participating in this in this uh, this degradation. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, Salim, and I'm you know I, I I know that folks like to talk about the young people, but some of these old dudes got problems, brother brother Halim. You got uh-huh. old dudes that's grandfathers talking about rap beefs from 20 25 years ago, brother <laughs> Halim. What's going on, man? What's going on out here? <laughs> but when oh, about, you know, some of those some of those rap beats were um were, they they have some potential, but they were they were colonized. And, you know, some of those yeah. rap beats had you know were leading us in in the right direction. But yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But I'm saying, Celine, they like they trying to pick like the battle of the senior citizens out here. Like, <laughs> like, I, I didn't know this brother, Gilly the Kid, or Gilly, he does this podcast, I think it's called Million Dollars Worth of Game, right? So mm-hmm. he's, I didn't even know that he was a rapper from Philly back in the day, because he went to jail, da 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 So this, this one, this one, the way I found out, this one brother choked no joke, and, you know, he got, he got a podcast, whatever. He was doing something on Twitter Spaces, and he had the, the the brother Birdman. I think that's Cash Money Records, and they talk. And, and I think Gilly the Kid was in the conversation. They talking about something that happened, Celine, thirty years ago. 
30 years ago with, with beef. And I'm like, man, the beef. 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 Yeah. And look at getting into who said what and how it went down and he got punched in the face and I lost respect for him. Oh my God, Brother Helene. Yes. What manner of foolishness is this? Well, well, assalamu alaikum to you and the WBON listening audience and my brother Salim and uh, uh, BJ and yes, sir. thank you, thank you, Nabo, for the invitation. Um, but you know, is Mr. Farrakhan had coined the statement, he who gives you the diameter of your knowledge prescribes you the circumference of your activities. Mm. So, so what what are they to talk about? If mm. they if they, if they can only have a narrow, uh, myopic, tunnel vision view of life mm. uh, that that is around these particular issues, um, yeah. are are they are they looking at the the world? Are they looking at the 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 current speeches of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan? If you go back to Savior's Day, the unraveling of a great nation. The criterion, the announcements to the world that he gave on July 4th of that year. Uh, did they listen to the swan song? Did they listen to uh, the war of Armageddon has begun? Have they listened to uh, the what What does the great MACD and the great Messiah say about the war in the Middle East? And in that speech, Minister Farrakhan said, you know, you, you, you better pay attention to what's going on overseas for you will soon see it on these shores. Do they really understand that the, the looking at the crackdown on uh, the students? Uh, just think about the hypocrisy of the conservatives saying that cancel culture kept conservative voices off of college campuses. And my governor, he has signed a law for freedom of speech. But yet he set the police, the state police, on these children here right. in the University of Texas for protesting uh, against the... Oh, well, you had Abbott. That, that Abbott, your man, huh? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Deep. So, so, we, so we're, we're looking at, we're looking at a situation, beloved, where, you know, they have to keep our, you know, the, 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 the Muslim tradition talks about what the Mahdi was coming to break the cross and, and to kill the swan. It's not about going out there and killing pigs and Piggly Wiggly or, or going to your church mm -hmm. and breaking your cross, beloved. It really is. It really is about, in terms of swan, is our filthy appetite for garbage, mm. and, and that's really what it is. Our minds are being fed garbage because the only way that the only the motive of of the uh, of iblis or the devil or Satan, as he is styled in the Holy Quran, where Allah gives him voice in the Holy Quran, is is that he said I, he said I, I'm I'm going to I'm going to mislead all of them. You won't find mm. any of them thankful. I'm going I'm to mm. come of them for. I'm going to come at them. I'm going to lie and die straight past. So I'm coming in religion. I'm going to go before them. <laughs> so and so I'm going to go before them. I'm coming after them. I'm going to be on their left. I'm going to be on their right. And you won't find any of them thankful. He's, and, mm -hmm. then, you know, he said, and, he, and he's going to get every one of them except for his purified ones. Mm -hmm. Now, so, so we have to understand that in that day, you know, when the matter is decided, the Quran says, that he he will say I had no authority over you except I called and you obey, <laughs> you know. So so right now our minds have to be have to be uh, not only in ratchetness, brother, but but brothers, but in, and listening on us. But think about the overlapping sports seasons. We're right now right now right now we're in the NBA playoffs, right? The baseball season has started. At the same time, we just had the NFL draft. So and so mm -hmm. we constantly over so we constantly sport in play sport in play, and now they've got some of our great celebrities that are, are promoting this gambling, and, and mm -hmm. when you, if you you know this whole thing, and then the bottom line is, is it is like you said it, uh, now, but you know going back all the way back to uh, you know our newspapers, our black media was about freedom, as Celine said, right. it's about freedom. It was about it was about reporting on lynching. It was a, a pointing on on injustice. You know, it was it was on 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 segregation and Jim Crow and all of the wrongs that were going on and talking about our uh, our freedom march, our march toward freedom. Excuse me. You know, that's what it was about. That's why the Muhammad speaks was so important. That's why the final call was so important. Exactly. That's 
That's why the Chicago Defender is so important. That's why the Houston, uh, that was the whole motive, that was the the whole motive time and all that is right. important. These, these, this is this is important, and that's why I love WVON and I love Wowie W O W I. When I went to Hampton, brother, during the seventies, there's a man that there's a man that once was coming on the airways out of WVON, and he was the head of the National Black Network. His name was Roy Wood Senior. He's the father yeah. of the comedian Roy Wood Jr., man. And he gave a commentary called One Black Man's Opinion. And if I could wow. ever get one recording of that, because that <laughs> kept me out, that kept my mind conscious in college while the Nation of Islam w- was, was going through its transition. I met Mr. Farcom. Believe it or not, brother, the beauty of being on this show tonight is, believe it or not, it was, it was during this, this very week. Did I met this team uh, 40, 48 years ago on Hampton's campus? Wow. wow. So, so, it's, it's, so all of this thing come together. And as we go further and talk about it, man, I'd like to talk about, you know, uh, in my upcoming book, I talk about the concentration of media ownership. You know, yeah. and I, I, yes. like to, I, like to, I like to cite some of that for you as the real problem. And the FCC, going back, uh, you, you can't even trust their, their figures on how many black and women-owned FM radio stations that are, and then on this media concentration. Let me just quote it now, and then we can go back to. Yeah, to yeah, go ahead. You know, it was uh, it, it, this comes out of um, this comes out of uh, uh, Middle Tennessee State University. They have a free speech center, right? And so there, there was a, a an a, an analyst by the name of Ben Bag Bagdakian, B A G D I K I A N. And he, and he had started the consolid, yeah, a consolidation of thirty year period, right? Uh, a thirty year period of consolidation of media ownership, right? He did a two thousand and four analysis where indicated that Americans are served by one thousand four hundred sixty eight daily newspapers, six thousand assorted assorted magazines, ten thousand radio stations, two thousand seven hundred television stations and cable stations, and two thousand six hundred book publishers. That are under the under the control of five major multi uh, multinational corporations. I said, "What? Mm. <laughs> said, oh man! So, <laughs> so what are we? So what are we competing about now? The black even right. the black radio stations of uh, uh, we're in a capitalist society, bro. They're competing yeah, for right. advertising dollars and during and during political campaigns, they're trying to get their, them political dollars. What is Roland Martin always complaining about? He's talking about those white consultants, right, that in the state yeah. the Democratic Party, the white consultants won't listen to black consultants or black media people, and they expect black people to come out and vote anyway, but they won't put no money in, in what is necessary to, to either. So, so, you know, we get getting played all the time. So what are we competing about? So what do we got to do? We have to feed the appetite of what the people want. I had a, I had a chance to sit down with the, uh, with the, uh, one of the chief executives of Radio One, and we were making an appeal to him. It was myself, the head of the Urban League, the head of NAAC, NAACP, and, of course, a prominent pastor in the city. We sat down with him for hours. I don't want to say his name over these ads, but he, he was a, he's a head executive of Radio One, very close to Kathy Hughes. And, and, we said, and we said to him, brother, can we get at least an hour, half hour of local conscious rap you know, there's conscious rappers in the city that are like underground, man. They should be able to get something, in, and I'm sure you will. He said, man, I'm, I, I can't do it. I'm trying to make money. Because mm. a, lot of these, a lot of them have leverage. They've had the, they, they've had the leverage uh, uh, or, or to buy these stations. They had to go into a lot of debt. They bought a lot of over, uh, overpriced stations. That's really, that's really the problem. Yeah. Mm. You know? So they got to they gotta make, they got to make, they got to meet that, they got to make that nut. So the advertising dollars is what's important. So I'm I'm going to you know hey I don't want no low let me let me play the same 25 songs over all these stations across the country. Right. Mm. I, I ain't doing nothing local. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And and we know and we already know the story about how they turned gangster rap. You seen in the final call the current final call number, you know about a shorty a girl shorty Muhammad out of out of L A. Uh, with Ice Cube mm-hmm. and how they went from conscious rap and how they flipped it into gangster rap and now it's all about women and, and pills and shooting and killing and, and, 
and all that, and you got cross dressing uh, 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 hip hop artists, and this is not even toxic masculinity anymore. It's like, well, yeah, what right. is going on, man? You right. understand? Yeah. So, 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 uh, of course they're gonna say we hating and all. I'm not hating, man. I'm just, I just know that culture, arts and culture, is a source of revolution. Right. When you meet the likes of of, of, of Sonia Sanchez, when you meet the likes. Uh, uh, you know, now I've been in our organizing for the Million Man March just to, to see Maya Angelou on that stage, man. Come on, Stevie Wonder talking about Stevie Wonder. When you're talking about, you're talking about uh, our musical, my, at least my age I come out of, brother. I come out of that Say It Loud, I'm Black and I'm Proud, where all the AM stations with our drums that were used during the, the movement. We used right. to run, rock them AM stations, man. We had them AM stations. That's that's how we communicated the movement, right? And we had okay. our consciousness, and we had our righteousness. Now, now, come on, we can't pretend like like righteousness <laughs> just started. I mean, if right. loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. Come on, now, you know. Uh, I was right. checking out when she was checking in, or me, me and Mrs. Mrs. Jones. Come on, now, you know that's that. That's a little bit ratchet. That's ratchet too, right? That's ratchet. Stuff. Yeah, hey, hey brother Holly. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention soft and wet. Man. I, I'm sorry. That was probably too. Oh, that was probably God. too far. I'm sorry. You know, well, there ain't nothing wrong. Yeah. Well, you know, ain't also, nothing you know, we got to we got to you know, keep okay. in mind. Exactly. We got to keep in mind a little bit that a lot of the, the art that we make comes out of the that we live. The, yeah. lie, the, 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 the raw material of our everyday existence. Uh, that, that's what comprises a lot of the art that we make, and that's why a lot of the, the, the brothers and sisters are creating is not optimal. The lives mm. that they're living is not optimal. So they, they, they create what they know that what, with their raw material. And, and we yeah. have to keep that in mind a lot of times, and, and, and that uh, should allow us, I think, to give, give a little mercy creative spirit of these folks because they're only creating the raw material of their existence, you know? Yeah. That's right. And, and that has yeah. to change. I can't you know, disagree um, with that, but you know, yeah, you know, Brother Salim, I, I, I have down here a, a, a group to put together called Artists Respecting Community. I don't know now, but if you remember, BJ, if you remember when Mike Brown, uh, the minister, decided to address the Mike Brown situation, and he said Ferguson yeah. was the flashpoint, but Chicago was, was ground zero. And then he had a reception, after he gave the lecture, he had a reception at the Salam restaurant, and literally for hours, man, he greeted the gang leaders, he greeted some of the local hip-hop artists and whatnot, and some of the believers that had come in to hear him talk. And then he turned to us, the ministers, we were sitting to his left, and he said, I want you to go back to your city and replicate what you just saw here. So I wow. came back to Houston, man, and, and eventually what happened is we formed a group called Artists Respecting Community. So there are there are underground rappers, there are rappers that I won't call them underground. These are these are very popular local rappers who 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 are conscious, man, and talk about community. Yeah, they talk about Celine, what you're talking about is the conditions that's in the community. Chuck D said that rap music or hip hop is, is the CNN of the black community. That's true. But it's not all bad news, right? Yeah. So these, these right, brothers, right. you know, and and then and then a lot of the rap ain't even political. So we got some some real politically sagacious rappers, right? That can that can that can that can rap. They got good beats. They got good producers. They got good music. But they can't get no radio play. They can't get. They can't crack into what you call the mainstream market because there pe are people who say no. We'll use this art and culture to suppress them. We can't let them be talking about, you know, you know, I, uh, uh, like funky president James Brown said, let's get together and buy some land, raise our food just like the man, save our money yes, do like yes, the mob, put up a factory and own the job. They can't have us yes, talking sir. like that, man. Right. So do we remember when, that, when all these rappers were, were they were biting Minister Farrakhan's uh, uh, speeches? Yeah. Right. Right. A lot of these, Mike, a lot of these hip hop jams had Minister Farrakhan speeches as a part of their, as part of their bonds, you know. Yeah. So yeah, and, and a lot of Mike, lot of Mike, Mike just want to grab me on his song. He just want to grab me sampling the minister. And so, then this uh, this guy Jay Cole, I understand, said I I only listen to Farrakhan. It's, it's a hook in it in it in one of his songs. So yeah, man, them people them them people know. 
then people know, brother. Like, let me put it like this, you know. And and and, and of course, uh, I'm being his student minister. I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be partial to the minister, but I, I see him as the sand in the hourglass, the second hand on the clock, and 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 the alarm on the alarm clock. And when when white folk talk about woke, woke ain't that kind of that is not that kind right. of language. That's right, us. Right. That's come out the hood. Yo, I'm woke. That's us, right? And right, then you can't right. talk about. And then critical race theory is taught in law schools. It ain't taught in elementary school, high school. Gra- it ain't even taught right. in graduate school, right? But CRT really is about us. It's about Black history. It's about the systemic racism that's in this country and still exists. And then when they, excuse me, when they talk about DEI, you know that was a result of, of the of the racial reckoning that took place after the murder of George Floyd. Everybody know that. Yeah. So, yeah, so and and all, you all, all this stuff, all stuff is about us. But at the core of woke is Minister Farrakhan because he brought, he made black popular again. We were not yeah. talking about black, man. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, that's why I love Roy Woods because during the time of the transition of the nation, when our language changed, we became under Ronald Reagan. I mean, from Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, we became a permanent underclass. We became minorities. We started calling ourselves that. We went away from being black, soul brother, soul sister. We went away from that stuff, man. And and and, and when Mr. Farrakhan brought back the nation, nation has never been a mass movement. It only moves the masses because it's the conscious in the consciousness. That's right. And you know, um, to be a conscious black broadcaster and being in the nation of Islam, you know, you accept that we're living in this time called the time of what must be done. And the minister mm. told us that the, the airwaves is sacred. So we, every yeah. time you get on the radio and you know that you're talking to the people of God, that you got to transmit truth. And there's a price that comes with transmitting the truth because the enemy yeah. don't like you doing that on his mainstream radio stations. That's why WVON is important and the internet is important because, you know, uh, though the minister talked about Steve Jobs, this device called the iPhone has liberated the whole world. And so I think now we, I think now we're making that transition into the social media space of controlling the messages because you can't do it up to a certain extent on mainstream media. So what do y'all think about the new media, which is social media and all those channels that we have to transmit truth? Once again, once again, we find ourselves where it was a good idea at first until people started transmitting information that that the the, the power elite don't want transmitted. Do you right. think they just passed? Look, they just passed the, the Pfizer law where they can have warrantless searches, just depending on if you're involved in terrorism and whatnot. These people, if you know anything about Edward Snowden, you know anything about my man Julian Assange. These people already have our data. So this TikTok ban ain't even about China. It ain't Mm. about China, man. America got all our data. Imagine now, but I do something stupid down here, right? I I do something again that that appears to be uh, overtly anti-Semitic or violent. Do you know that every Facebook post I've ever made, every like, every everything I've ever looked at, They'll they'll be able to broadcast cross that on the moon, uh, on the news. I will be I will be tried in the court of public opinion before I ever see a courtroom. Right, <laughs> right, that's, right. That's what so, but 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 the TikTok ban is really about the fact that the thing that's trending on TikTok it is pro Palestinian. That are the children when you look at that's why these college students are, are, are protesting. The TikTok ban is that's definitely right. connected to it. Man, that's look, right. they, look, that's how they get their news. From 19, the, the 14 to, I think, 20 to 30-year-olds get their news from TikTok. And what it is, it's not a, as, it, as they got this, uh, a, a portion of a secret recording of Jonathan Greenblatt on the Anti-Defamation League. <laughs> that's right, we got a TikTok problem. He said, he said, yeah, he said <laughs> he got a TikTok problem. He said it's not left-right, it's not a left-right, it's a young-old. See, once you lose, once you lose that generation, once you use, lose the youth, like the Vietnam War, 
See, what we're seeing is we're seeing this thing being played out all over again, and the the brutal tactics of the police, you're going to tie it to the ADL because the ADL used to send our police over to Israel to learn how to deal with to how to deal with a uh, 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 population that, that that they wanted to control. I hope you get the book by Anthony Lowenstein called the, the, the Palestine Laboratory, how Israel exports the technology of occupation around the world. Those police are moving on them children just like they move on the Palestinians. They've experimented on the Palestinians and have perfected on how to have crowd control and do all of that. Man, they learn that stuff from the, from the ADL. The ADL is the, is the one that was sending the police over there and coming back here with that crap, man. That's so right. Look, That's bro, right. We, we have to understand that these babies, and, and if you really think about it, and that's why we, we can't use, you know, we can't use the language of the 60s anymore. We really have to, we really have to expand, uh, expand our breasts and make room in our assembly, Brother Naba, Brother BJ, Brother Salim, because the truth of the matter is, when Floyd was murdered, that was a multicultural, multi-religious, multi-racial, worldwide uprising. Right. Right? And the same thing is going on with Gaza now. So they're connected through that social media, like you said, brother. And what we're finding is, is that really the thing that's deep is that this, this, uh, this fight against genocide in, uh, in Gaza is being led by Jewish students. But we, we must not forget that the one that really struck the first blow was Minister Farrakhan when he filed suit on October 16th against the Anti-Defamation League and the Simon Wiesenthal Center. And then that was followed up by the end of December with the, the uh, International Court of Justice suit filed by South Africa. There's a connection between all of this that has happened. And, and, and just because they, they, they threw it out of court, but we won anyway because the signs are there. In the, in, the, in the creation of the heavens and the earth and, and, and the alternation of the night and day, there's signs for men of understanding. So they threw, they threw the case out. They threw the case out. Uh, uh, and, and then there was a, a $4.8 billion lawsuit they threw out. And the same day, the same day they did it, there was a 4.8 record earthquake in New York. Now, mm. You can't make this stuff up. And right. then on that Monday... It was, it was, uh, that Monday, it was April the 8th was the eclipse, right? It was the eclipse yeah. on the 8th. And it, it was the last right here in Texas for four minutes and eight seconds. Oh, come on, man. Wow. You can't make this stuff, you can't make this stuff up, man. So That's all right, of these man. signs, all these signs are saying to us, man. It's saying to us, and in the, the 75th Surah of the Holy Quran, it, it talks about, you know, <clears throat> the resurrection. It talks about, uh, that the, the sun and the moon, of being obscured, the light, the sun, and the moon being obscured is, is a sign of the MACD and the Messiah. So all of this, all of this put together, and I'll make it real practical for the brothers and sisters out there. You have to understand that what you see going on overseas, you will soon see here. In fact, you're seeing it here. And don't think that now, Minister Farrakhan said, uh, and, and many people misquoted him uh, in the unraveling of a great nation, but, uh, nah, but he said, uh, that Donald Trump, or, or it was a criteria, he said Donald Trump would be the last of the presidents. He said, Mr. Trump, you right. being one of the last of the presidents. They said, well, Donald, he said that Donald Trump was the last of, no, he said one of the last of the presidents. Right. And, right. But, he asked, but he asked the question in, in, uh, in Unraveling of a Great Nation. He said to us, and what if Donald Trump was reelected? What, what are we going to do? He, he said he's going to dismantle the, the administrative state, what he called the, the, the administrative, he's going to dismantle the administrative state. And we have made our progress, if you really look at it, the black middle class has been built up in that D.C., Maryland area, that DMV area, from government work. Yeah. It was, it was Truman, it was Truman that integrated, that integrated the military. So we found a pathway to become generals and captains and colonels and majors and, and then go into to, to civilian life, you know, after doing government. So government has been helpful to us uh, in some cases, not all the cases, but it's also made us dependent. And now that he's getting ready to, it, 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 this whole thing, 
this whole thing, we're trying to save democracy, and yet the very people that's talking about saving democracy is acting like fascists right now, especially as they're treating these children on these college campuses, and going soon be treating us that way in these neighborhoods. We just keep on shooting each other, man. You know, we're being mm. set up. All of our black, right. all of our black democratic cities are being set up right now. Oh, they're, they're bastions of crime. No, they're not. No, they're not. There's some crimes that's going up, but a lot of crimes. And like, we're just sensationalizing it and making it look that way. There's a culture war going on, and we have our, like I said, we got our nose in the slot trough. So, yeah, it's ratchet and all of that. Not all of it. There's rays of hope like this, like the Final Call uh, uh, newspaper and, and other affiliated uh, media uh, that we have coming out of the nation and other conscious people. It's not like we're doing it alone. There's a lot of good uh, uh, information sources out here. But don't think. If you look at this, and what you, you should really get concerned about is when Fox and Newsmax and the MSNBC and CNN all agree and start promoting the same kind of stuff, these warmongers, or, or these warmongering uh, uh, news stations are talking about Israel and Gaza. It's almost like they're reading from the same play, playbook. Right, right, right. Man, they don't agree on nothing, but they agree on this. That should automatically tell us we're in trouble because APAC owns all of them. I don't Bro, know, man. Y'all got, me, I'll, y'all got me going to the twilight zone. <laughs> <laughs> what you want to say on that, brother? Uh, hey, I, I'm, I'm, I'm learning. My brother's teaching. Um, you know, the um, ICC is getting ready to uh, issue an arrest warrant, man, for Netanyahu and his bloodthirsty cabinet. It's going be an interesting development. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna really uh, give some some uh, moral justification to all of this campus stuff that's going on. Uh, people are going to you know right now the 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 uh, the, the, the narrative is that is is being driven by anti-Semitic uh, sentiments. But this comes out once the ICC issues this warrant, it's going to change. It's going to change the narrative a bit. Uh, I, I you know the the. The media active is going to shift a bit. Not not a lot, but it's going to it's going to make a lot of these students. It's going to give them a much more heroic future than they have right now. Yeah, I, I know, think you have the right side of history. Um, I was um, looking at at that, and I was looking at the so little defense of the right to protest. This talk about um, Jewish students feeling uncomfortable. Well, black students are always uncomfortable. Absolutely. And talking about feeling tension. But they kept describing these quote-unquote anti-Semitic attacks, but they weren't talking about nobody being arrested. They weren't showing nobody who was injured. But there was a concerted effort to paint these children man, as 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 radicals, the uh, betterment out of out of uh, Pennsylvania, the congressman. He they he described these children as lying in a pup tent for Hamas, and that not being a good thing. So um, as we look at Celine, what's happening, how do we continue to work? Because my thing is, you got to get out of that mainstream media matrix. How do we help people do that? How do we work with people to see that? You know, I think, man, that, 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 uh, that is one of the, one of the most um, significant revelations to come out of this whole TikTok. Uh, animus that that's developing here. And just how important the alternative team of media is in terms of shaping um, perspectives, and and it is indeed. You know, uh, the, the the ADL's um, chief was right about that. They they do have a TikTok problem because taking past that mainstream, those mainstream monitors, it, it's getting into. Uh, into into the, the, the to the uh, psyche of a, of a lot of these people's children. Right. Um, it's this right. brother. Uh, interesting. This bro- is a brother who's pushing uh, a, a new device to try to put a mo- anti-Semitic monitor 
these schools, nationally mm. appointed anti, you know, monitor to go into these schools and, and to, to of any anti-Semitic uh, sentiments that he that he finds there. It's, it's, wow. an, it's a brother who's doing this. I forgot the, the brother from mm. New York. I forgot his name. Um, but he's he's definitely you know he's APAC all the way. APAC um, is, is, is you know it. it it contributes deeply to his um, campaign, so he, you know we, we see where his inspiration is coming from. But it's an it's an incredible kind of development that they they would even suggest something like this. Yeah, and and, they, and they're unapologetic monitor. about it. Yeah, and but they're apologetic. unapologetic about it. And my mm-hmm. thing is, you can't have power, you can't display power, and then say your powerlessness. So if you display power and I see it, and I say, wait, you got power over here. Now you accuse me of being anti-Semitic, which is their common um, tool. That when when criticism comes up, when criticism comes up, they go to the go-to, which is your your anti-Semitic. And to me, you know, you know, I've been writing, you know, we, we can, and you can get the show, brothers and sisters, go to SprayWords.com, and you can get the replays. We got a YouTube channel. We got Spotify. And you can hear, you know, more um, about these things. But, Brother Helene, you mentioned, you mentioned the, 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 the money aspect. And one of the things, this is according to Statistica, from from last year, blacks black consumers spend an average of three point five five hours, almost four hours a day, watching TV. Mm-hmm. While Asian and Hispanic people average Asian average about one point seven five hours, and Hispanic average about two point five hours a day. Um, the other thing is that when it comes to streaming services, blacks are more likely not just to have streaming services, but to have like three of them that they paid for. Mm. So so these things, they, they bring us um, to a certain point, especially when you're not creating media, you know? Why do you think that things. is, though? Why, why, why do you why do you think we're so attracted to, to, those, to those media products? What, what do you think it is about about our socialization process that has us in that direction? I think part of it is the stress and pressure that we feel every day, and we're looking for some kind of outlet and some kind of relief. I mean, consider if you're in Chicago. How many stories do you hear about violence and us perpetuating violence on each other? Then I think if you've got parents that are, I think if you've got parents that are working, and you know the children have to be occupied because the parents can't be there, and they they you know they they can't afford uh, the 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 type of of childcare at home that Mm -hmm. that they want. So I, I think a lot of that, and I think the, I think the other thing is it being aimed at us because we're such a lucrative audience in terms of I think it's what a um, trillion dollars or something like. I think it's not a trillion. I got to look it up. This is a trillion. Yes, what right. one, talking about. Yeah, last week I thought it was like one point seven trillion, but it may be more than that. Yeah, I so, think it is. So, yeah. so we have a we we have a lot, even though. Surveys have shown that we don't like we don't even like the portrayals, right? We got problems with the portrayals, but we're still consuming the product. Except for Good Times reboot, we kicked that to the curb. That was a win. So, brothers, yeah. we are coming to the top of the hour. I don't know if you can hang out with us, but if you can, please stay go. with us for as long as you got to go. Got to go, man. I, I, I... Long day. <laughs> I had a long yes, day. Man, I, 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 I would, I would love to spend some more time. I would please invite me back, my brother. I, I, I really appreciate do. being on this landmark uh, 
and your, your one year anniversary, man. I really appreciate that. And I feel greatly honored to have been a participant. So please invite me back. You know, that's yes, a promise, brother. And we're greatly honored to have you. So may yeah, I God bless you. And again, for your show, give us the day and the time that it airs on WBON, brother Celine. 7 to 10 on every Saturday, every Saturday night. All right. Stu, radio Salam. audience. Salam. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Brother Salim. Brother, Brother Halim, <laughs> hold on, man. Brother BJ, do that. We yes, got sir. one minute. Do what All we right. got to do to stay where we got to stay, man. Yes, sir. Well, let's get it in. Brothers and sisters, please help us uh, stay on the air another year. You helped us this past year. And um, I'm telling you, by the grace of Almighty God alive, we are still here rolling strong. We got some special uh, guests coming up next hour. And, of course, you heard that powerful content from last hour talking about.